Hello, welcome and good evening to another little experiment and this time we go even less minimal. I've got two Raspberry Pis here, a well-known Raspberry Pi Zero which I'm actually using because it was already set up for the Christmas tree which I'll revisit. Uh, uh, Christmas the latest but maybe before. And this Raspberry Pi Model A, first revision basically. Why am I using this? Because it has a nice case which I use as a resonating box to make the speaker louder. Yeah, this little thing here, I uh, have a bunch of them here, um, came from China. I will put a link to something like that in the description. Um, Ten were the price of, I don't know, less than two euros with shipping. Those are piezo or however you call them in English, buzzers. Basically they are little brass plates with a ceramic wafer on top and you simply attach to wires, apply a voltage and the piezo crystal will flex basically and you can toggle the voltage and make the whole thing vibrate. This is basically the thinnest you can see how thin it is, it's uh, yeah, almost paper thin. The thinnest and cheapest speaker you can build. You can't do any amplitude modulation basically with this, um, but they are extremely simple. You can just wire them up to any TTL level output and yeah, make them buzz. But not only that, you can of course toggle the voltage at a certain frequency. Um, if you do 440 times a second it will play um, the note A and so you can play songs with this. It doesn't sound fine but um, or great. It's basically just uh, square waves, uh, monophonic square waves and it's pretty quiet. So these are very small ones. You can get bigger ones and you can probably drive them with higher voltages to get loudest sounds and I bought these to put them in the GoTek floppy emulator because you can hook them up to the um, pins for the stepper motor and then the thing will make very quiet but distinct sounds similar to those of a real floppy drive which is nice so you can hear that program still accessing the disk without having to check the display that we put in. Um, so yeah we will do that later in a later video, but for now we will just test this to play a nice Christmas tune. So let's check out the Raspberry Pi and the code that we need for that. Alright, here we are. So this code I also found on GitHub. So someone already did all the work for us and the only thing that I changed was the tune. Basically this thing was playing the Star Wars Imperial March and I thought let's do something more Christmassy and I took the sheet music from Wikipedia for Silent Night and I transcribed it. But let me first walk you through the code here. So this time we're not using Python but a C program. C uh, is a, another programming language which all the coders out there know. But if you are a beginner you probably haven't seen it yet. But it doesn't matter, you could write the same stuff in Python. The only thing to well, worth mentioning here is the first two lines include some libraries, the wiring pi library which gives you access to the GPI opens of the Raspberry Pi from within C. You have to install that actually, so you want to do sudo apt install wiring pi. I already did this naturally, so it will say here it's already the newest version. And when you install this, you can do this include wiringpi.h and we choose um, the pin here and wiringpi pin GPIO pin 0 corresponds to the GPIO 17 on the Broadcom CPU or pin 11 basically on your uh, header of the Raspberry Pi um, which is incidentally the sixth pin on the Lua row. You can check back, I will put a, uh, I think I will put a picture in here uh, in the post-edit stuff. 
so you can check out how I wired this up. There's a ground pin right next to it, so it's very useful. So you can just put the um, black wire from the piezo on the ground and the red wire on this pin 11. Um, the person who wrote this, I will link to his uh, GitHub repository in the video description. He first defined three octaves worth of um, notes. So the lower C is 129 hertz and so on and so on. Then there's the second octave with the A uh, being at 440 hertz. So this is what musicians use to tune in their instruments. And then we have a higher octave, so we have three octaves. You could adjust this and uh, add even more uh, octaves naturally. And then all the meat of this whole program is the beep function. It takes a note, um, basically an integer value and a duration. And yeah, um, basically the note is the hertz as defined here so basically you can just use the define bh and it will be turned by the compiler into 933 and passed to the function and a duration in milliseconds so it will compute the semi-period of each node and uh, compute how much time we need to spend on the node this is uh, more or less just uh, straightforward and then it will count the time the time takes basically and it will, so basically it will um, compute how long each on and off signal is basically, right? Um, that's, that's this beep delay here. And then how many, uh, how much time we need to spend on the whole node. And it will count up this time and the first semi period is to uh, turn on the signal, which is basically the uh, first half of the rectangle wave and it will delay and keep the output pin high for that amount of time. And then the second semi period is the low, so um, the basically the other half of the rectangle wave. I will put in another drawing here, I think, uh, to make this clear. And then they write a very little delay, basically, to uh, separate the nodes. If you wanted to have um, connected nodes, which is sometimes useful in music, uh, you would need to write a slightly different function or give a parameter here, not to make this 20 millisecond uh, delay. And then we have the play function, which is just a long line of beeps. Um, I, as I said, took just a picture of, of the Silent Night song from Wikipedia or something and transcribed it. So uh, put the notes in here and I said one full note is 1000 milliseconds and uh, it's three fourths I think so uh, we have in every bar we have 1500 am I saying garbage? I think I'm saying garbage right? I think yeah a full note is 1000 exactly Full note is uh, 2000 milliseconds, so 2 seconds and 1000 milliseconds is a half note. I think this is a half note. Okay, and we have 1500 milliseconds in each bar, basically. So I separate the bars by just a new line. Uh, you can do the same. Tran transcription is pretty easy, it's just copy-paste and filling in the right notes. And I also put the, the text here and uh, the, the lyrics uh, so that I don't get lost in transcription because it all looks so similar. Yeah, this is pretty pretty bare bones. And then the main function, which is the main program which gets run, is just calling the wiring pi setup function. And if there's an error for some reason, you will get a minus one returned. And it will say failed, but I've never seen that. Don't know how this can fail. And otherwise, it will configure um, the pin that we're using as an output pin and not as an input pin, you always have to specify this. And then it just plays Silent Night. And yeah, let's do that. First question of course is how do we compile a C program? Such a simple C program we can compile using the GCC compiler. And the very very simple thing to do that is uh, we give it the name of the, of the, of the source file. And we also say what the output should 
be called, and we just call it buzzer. That will be the executable. And since we're using the wiring pi library, you also have to say dash l for I want to use this library, and the library is called wiring pi node the capital P here. And we can do that. It will compile. It will say not much. But it will produce a little binary, 8872 bytes in size. And we can, oops, simply run it. And that's that. I mean, the sound is not great. Uh, there you can hear also quite a bit of jitter every time the kernel or another process takes CPU time away from our program. This um, rectangle wave will not be perfect, so you will hear a little bit of noise or jitter in the playback. There is another option. I think the Raspberry Pi has pulls with modulation outputs, which I think are programmable by hardware, and they should be perfect. But I haven't tried that yet. Uh, maybe in another video. But for the time being, you can do quite nice stuff with this. Um, you can check it out. Uh, those things can be had for very cheap money. You can use them um, with a Raspberry Pi. You probably know them from like uh, Christmas greeting cards or something. That those which, when you open them up, they will play a little tune. Uh, they also use these piezo um, things, but with a very small microcontroller attached to them in a button cell. Uh, this is obviously here totally over-engineered using a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, you probably can do that with, I don't know, one of those 3 cent microcontrollers or uh, even an ATtiny tiny or something would be perfect for that. Probably even better than the Raspberry Pi because they won't have the problem with the, with the jitter, jittery output. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Please share, like, and subscribe as usual, and have a nice Christmas!